Welcome to another Dragon Age Inquisition modding video. Today we're doing a complete mod list, as in this is what I'd use right now in my game if I were to start a complete playthrough. Please note, this list could very well change in a month or two, or it could be my main list for a year or more. It just depends on the mood I'm in. However, it should serve as a great place to start if you're looking to mod your game from top to bottom. A few important things to mention. This list includes both Frosty and .dai mods, and some of these mods have been in my list since early 2015. So there might be better or updated versions of them, but overall, these are my favorite and make DAI feel like home to me. A few of these mods are no longer available, but I'm going to list them out anyways, just in case they either come back in the future or a similar version gets created down the road. I'm also not going to be going in depth into any of these mods, but more listing them out because otherwise we'd be here for a very very long time. I do have a lot of top DAI mod videos in my Dragon Age playlist, which features a lot of these mods in case you want to see more information about some of them. I'll link that in the description of this video. And the mods listed in this video will also be linked in the description as well as any accompanying blog posts. Please keep in mind that this is my personal mod list, and while it won't be to everyone's cup of tea, it is how I prefer to play my game both functionally and stylistically. There are so many mods available on a variety of websites that if you don't like some of them, just don't install them or find a suitable alternative to the ones mentioned. While these mods do work in the base game, I can't guarantee that they'll work in the DLCs. The DLCs are fickle and sometimes certain mods will work and then the next run they won't, so it's something you'll just have to play around with once you get into them and start playing. Lastly, if you have any trouble installing mods, I do have updated DAI modding tutorials and they're all linked in my Dragon Age playlist, so please check those out. And with that being said, let's dive into this gigantic mod list. Let's talk about character creation slash inquisitor based mods first. I'm personally only basing this on an elf female inquisitor, which is my personal favorite. But if you have a different preference for inquisitor, feel free to adjust these mods accordingly or find comparable mods for the race and gender options that you prefer. I always use enhanced character creator as a base for my inquisitors, as I prefer the way it expands the CC. I personally use the frosty version, but there is an older .dai mod version available if that works better for you. Then for CC frosty mods, I also use stay still in CC so my inquisitor doesn't constantly move around, which makes it way easier to sculpt their appearance. Caffeine painters NPC hairstyles for inquisitor for the hairstyle and half kuhn complexion for frosty for the skin complexion. For .dai mods, I use SOS Brows on Fleek, the basic version, SOS Lashes, Corix Freckle Edit. I literally cannot live without this freckle edit and cannot make an Inquisitor without it. It's literally my absolute favorite. I also use Those Eyes version 4, SK Scalp Edit, located in the SK Hair Pack mod. However, I'm not sure if I really need it anymore because of enhanced CC, but I still leave it in there just to be safe. I also use a makeup edit mod by Kittentails that's under the miscellaneous files in the Inquisitor Complexion mod called No Blush or Under Eye Color. I have a scar mod called Scarquisition that I think I got off of Tumblr forever ago, which is unfortunately no longer available. And lastly, this could go either way as a CC mod, but I do have Inquisition Valis Lean changes, and I'm using the Origins port version. That way, both my Inquisitor and the other elves in-game have consistent Valis Lean with DAO and DA2. As a note, when I was testing these mods out in later game saves, I was getting some crashing in Skyhold and found that disabling the Enhanced Character Creator mod seemed to help. If you find yourself with a similar problem, I'd highly suggest trying that out. I also uninstalled Stay Still in CC as I didn't need it after the beginning of the game. The only caveat here is if you're going to hop into the CC in the Black Emporium or you want to use these mods on Hawk later on, you'll need to re-enable them before doing so. For other Inquisitor mods that use Frosty, I have a Morrigan's Outfit that's located in the Elf Pajamas Replacer mod and is called Morrigan's Robes. I pair that with the Equip Aeroshock Armor as Prologue and Skyhold Optional File 
That's located in the Frosty Vibs wardrobe mod. That way I can use the Morrigan's robe outfit as a replacer for the Aeroshock armor, which I usually craft for myself, as well as my prologue outfit and my Skyhold outfit. For formal attire, I have other mods that are .dai in format that we'll talk about in a minute. My Inquisitor also uses the No Combat Grimace, Quirked Brow option, the Neutral Expression, No Frown While Idle, and I'm also using the All Ability Trees for Inquisitor, which unlocks all the skill trees. And then, my new favorite mod, Mixed Mage Builds, specifically the Stormblade build. I went into depth on this mod in my most recent Top DAI Mods video, and honestly, I cannot say enough good things about it. 100% worth checking it out if you'd like a fresh new combat experience in DAI. This last Frosty mod will be 100% load order dependent on whether or not you need it, but it is called the Frosty Texture Glitch Fix as I found that the half kune complexion wigged out a few times for me and this mod fixed it beautifully. For the Inquisitor mods that are .dai based, I have the Silver Moon Wedding Dress for the Dress and Formal Wear Replacer for the Winter Palace Quest. To make that work, I paired it with the Formal Wear Crafting Wedding Dress and Formal Wear Replacer Wedding Dress options in the Trespasser Skyhold PJ Replacer and Schematic mod. There's also the Dress Mesh Edit for All mod from Steffi's Odds and Ends to remove the Dress Sash. I'm also using the Explorer's Ability mod that is located in the Unlock and Change Specialization mod. Honestly, this is personally a must-have, so you don't have to switch between characters when trying to break down a wall or pick a lock. Plus, it allows you to have a full mage, rogue, or warrior party if you really want to. I also have two mods that I use to make sure I have the look and materials that I want for my character early on in the game. And those are the Crossroads Crafting Supplies and the Seasonal Palettes Dark Winter version. Additionally, I do have no dirt buildup on pants because as immersive as dirt buildup is, I'm 100% happier with the headcanon that either a mage or my mage inquisitor just uses spells on their pants to make sure they don't have dirt on them. <laughs> Next, let's talk about what I deem to be utility mods. For Frosty, we have No Glow and Shimmering Healing Potions, Origin Fonts, Requisition Officer Off, a PK Pop-Up Killer with Extras, and Quest Tracker Hider. These are all fantastic and, in my opinion, really make the game more enjoyable to play. The last Frosty mod I have is called No Search Pulse Visualization, which just removes the search pulse when I'm looking for things. I have it paired with a .dai mod called a silent failed search, so when a search turns up nothing, it doesn't make that annoying noise. For other .dai mods, I'm using quicker looting, more inquisition levels, more influence pack version, new game plus, and war table no waiting. War table no waiting also has an updated frosty version, but I'm still using the .dai mod version. I also have no desecration, which is a mod specifically for the Dalish questline in the Exalted Plains, and I only recommend installing it if you intend to do that questline. Now on to the companion mods. We're gonna mix things up and start with the .dai mod ones first, as I have just well more of those. First, let's talk about overall companion ones. For the Winter Palace, I have both Party at the Winter Palace with Extended Introductions and Inquisition Branded Finery in white. Also, as a hardcore Cullen Mancer, I have the Restored Cullen Dialogue mod installed. For companion appearances, buckle in as there's a ton of them from a bunch of different mods. Cassandra is using the Complexion Only from Seeker Sending, a Cassandra mod. Her outfit is from Noble Cassandra, which I'm using the Royal Outfit version. Colin's outfit is from Celtic Commander Expanded, and it's the Obsidian Knight version. I also don't have an outfit change for Solus, but I am using the Eggs Without Hats, so he doesn't have a hat during the Winter Palace quest. Vivienne is using both the outfit and complexion from Above the Din and Dam, a Vivienne mod. Leliana is using the complexion only from Darkling I Listen, a Leliana mod, and the outfit is from Leliana Remade, and it is the Dark and Worn one. 
Josephine's outfit retexture is from Inquisition's Ambassador, and then she's using the Makeover and Pearl Earrings from Ambassador Montillier Accessories and Makeover Mods. I also have the Dorian in Black mod, which changes his outfit to all black. It's important to note that a lot of these mods now have frosty versions, especially any by Elise and Caffeine Painter. Speaking of Frosty, the Iron Bull mod I use, uh, Iron Bull's Body, Vitar, and Piercings, is now out for Frosty. However, I'm still using the original DAI mod version, which unfortunately isn't available any longer. I'm also using the Frosty mod Party Banter with the 3-7 to seven minute option. There is an older one for .DAI that I have used in the past, and it still works very well if you'd prefer that. Lastly, I have Iron Bull No Stripes mod that sadly is no longer available. It just removes the stripes from his pants. <laughs> I don't have any complexion mods for any other companions, as I can never seem to get them all to be stable in my load order. But I'd highly recommend checking out Nexus mods for additional ones if your favorite companion wasn't included in my list. Last up, we have literally just the rest of my mods. For Frosty, we have Methal Statues Remade. I believe this mod was featured in a previous video. And for .DAI, I have Aura's Sun's Sweet Snow Owls, the Resplendent Inquisition in Black and Gold, Open All Halidors for the Winter Palace Quest, and Worn Inquisition Black Armors. Worn Inquisition does have an updated Frosty port as well. Lastly, I have a companion tarot wall art in the Skyhold bedroom that I got forever ago, and unfortunately I can't find a direct link for it, and I don't know if it's available anymore. Phew, y'all, those are my mods. It's a chonky list, but personally makes my time in Dragon Age Inquisition the most enjoyable. I hope you found a few mods to add to your own list within this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!